You know, times have changed. There's something undeniably different about my Sims 2 characters getting the hanky-panky versus Abby and Owen's romantic scene. Oh, how romantic. Thank God I'm blind. But hey, hey, don't get it twisted, yo yo. Looky here, I can't, I can't whistle, by the way. People love to make the discourse around sexualization in gaming a vessel for their socio-political ideologies and agendas in the ever-raging culture war, or whatever. I've wanted to make this video for the good part of a decade now, not because I wanted to posture any sense of moral superiority or virtue signal an ideal that I demand everyone else share with me. No, I don't want to quote unquote censor games. Instead, I want to offer an alternative view that I don't see in this discourse very often, accessibility. Without making mountains out of anthills, I will briefly explore some of the initial concerns around sexualization in gaming. I'll unpack the differences I see between attractiveness and objectification, and I'll explain why it relates to accessibility. Lastly, I'll share with you a rather obvious solution. Look, look, if you crank open a game and the first question that comes into your mind is, where the damn wife. <laughs> this discourse probably isn't going to be for you, dude. I genuinely don't believe the problem lies in a character's innate attractiveness. Video games are, for many, a form of escapism. Historically, movies and television shows have hired actors that are conventionally attractive to portray their characters. The same is just true for games. Beautiful people populating a game isn't unreasonable. Outside of caricatures or irrelevant NPCs, most characters are genuinely attractive and that's totally fine. As humans, we are naturally drawn to attractive people. And look, to prove this point, I made this meandering section about how influences are pretty and people like pretty people and I mean, the point is so self-evident, I have no idea why I went to the trouble to do this. Who's a silly billy? I am! <laughs> Over time, attractive features in video games have continued to improve. Which again, I just really want to stress this. There's nothing wrong with being attractive. However, there is a transient difference between a character looking attractive and it feeling like they're made with the sole intention of sex appeal. <laughs> Let me explain. I think it's most problematic when two features coexist. Exaggerated body features and being devoid of character or depth. Without character, their body becomes the focal point. The humanity of a character is diminished and it just doesn't take long until it devolves into monkey brain objectification. Whoa, whoa, whoa. However, attractive characters with exaggerated features such as Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII are a rather strong example of fan service done right. She never feels like an object or just a pure vessel for male perversity because she is a fantastically written and realized character. It also helps that the plot unfolding around her is genuinely interesting. Other examples that come to mind are Selina from Spider-Man or Catwoman from Arkham. Both are a bit yeehaw. But they also have depth, they have purpose, and they aren't just relegated as eye candy. And if sexualization or fan service is the main thing in a game, most people would agree that that detracts from the experience. I mean, come on, how many people can look you dead in the eyes and tell you Nikki, Goddess of Victory, is their favorite video game of all time? Mm-hmm. Didn't think so. And can we just take a moment to acknowledge how damn annoying all these mobile game ads are? All right, look at this. <sighs> Yikes! You can call Rise me for of bells. anything you need because I'm your personal assistant. Personal assistant, eh? Hey? I'll take you to see other places. <laughs> Isn't that romantic? I'm your assistant? I'll take you to Just see other places. Okay, here's one I see literally everywhere. This stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> <gasps> like, what? What is this game, man? Okay, it's falling. Like, what? What is this doing? I don't understand what this is doing. Like, that's so weird. <laughs> like what like what in the tar nation is this stuff it is a scourge on gaming 
and it's literally everywhere. Like if you play video games, this stuff shows up in your YouTube ads or Reddit, like all over the place. It's super weird, unless that's just me, in which I'm also really concerned for myself. My point is attractiveness devoid of character often, whether you like it or not, leads to objectification. Whilst well-realized characters actually dispel objectification. It's why Stella Blade's Eve was subject to so much controversy earlier this year. A surface level assessment would deduce that she has exaggerated features. Who is hot? Eve's hot, she's hot. We can all agree. She's hot. And without playing the game to see her character development, many people believed her to be just another object of the male fantasy. Articles flooded in criticizing the character before the game's demo was even launched. And unbeknownst to most initial critics, Eve was actually modeled after a Korean model, undermining or at least complicating the assertion that Eve is only created for sex appeal. She's based on a real person. Character models aside, it needs to be noted that the gameplay in this game is actually really freaking good though. That was sick. And if I understand this correctly, most people come into these games looking for great characters, a good story, excellent gameplay, and fan service just kind of acts as icing on the cake, you know? It's not necessary, nor is it what they ask for, but if it's not overpowering, then it's fine. And look, I'm by no means saying this is everyone, but if the main reason you come to a video game is for sex appeal or fan service, then I guess we have different priorities and what we want from our video games. This brings us to an obvious point. In all forms of media, it's no secret sex sells. This is a really well-known phenomenon. Hell man, I remember hitting up so fresh, the hits of autumn 2009. Woo! They had, so like they had your CD, right? Which had all your songs up. Then they also had this DVD that started coming with it, which had all the film clips on it. I'm pretty sure that those music videos in tandem with Soul Calibur 4's character creator speed ran me into puberty, dude. Sex sells. It demands attention. It stirs publicity and it absolutely gets people talking. If you don't believe me, just look at the visceral reaction that Fable trailer garnered because the girl didn't meet the constructed ideal. I can guarantee you people would not have been as mad if you just made that fairy look something like like this. And it's fair to say that in gaming, a disproportionate amount of sexualization often depicts women. But I think a better solution is to sexualize men more. But seriously, if there is a major issue around objectifying women in video games, I say go ahead and objectify men too. It's not like we can change the fact that sex sells and companies are gonna use it to sell products. So why not level the playing field a bit? So due to the disproportionate amount of female sexiness, why not just even the playing field and sexualize men a lot more? Why not have more voluptuous Clive Rossfield man boobies in games? Oh boy, yeah. Let's get more of the Timothy Chalamet as a pretty boy edgelord puppet vibe. Heck, some might even consider Spider-Man in his Spidey suit a form of fan service. Just look at those deltoids. Yum, yum, yum. Great. That's one more revenue stream Wilson this can't use to pay his- Whilst this would certainly satiate some naysayers for sure, and on the surface promote equality, I'm unsure if it's a legitimate fix. And whilst we're on this topic, I actually wanted to quickly show you this clip. It's a clip from Fortnite, so don't click off, stay with me for a moment. Now as any cultured gamer might know, there is a myriad of emotes in this game. But I didn't know this, but some emotes actually change depending on what sex the player is playing as, right? Here, look at this. Ha, ha, ha. Did you did you see that? Did you catch that? Let look look rewind the tape. Rewind the tape. Rewind time. Right there. Right there. Look here, boy. My legs are wide open. I ain't about that life. I just think it's rather curious that this particular emote would be censored for female skins and not male skins. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not losing any sleep over this. But it does kind of beg the question of, well, um, why? Why would you implement an emote if you deem it suggestive or inappropriate for females to do, but you think it's fine for males to do? It just like doesn't really make sense. So it's all hunky-dory for Kratos to drop it like it's hot, but when Chung Lee does it, no, 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 no. Can't we see the double standard there a little bit? I don't know. Now, accounting for everything we've said so far in this video, here's my solution. 
modern titles marked for an adult audience like Cyberpunk 2077, Witcher's Last of Us Part 2 should have a toggle on the accessibility settings to disable or enable sexually explicit content, particularly if you intend to put it in main scenarios, giving more control into the player's hand. The same can be said for fighting games that have really raunchy outfits. Why not give me alternative outfits that I can toggle on? If I was to play Stellar Blade, I'd probably play it in this cool sports attire. It's great that I've got that option. For the more intense stuff, I'm pretty sure 2077 has a variant of this sort of thing. If I'm not mistaken, I think they called it streamer mode or something, and they implemented it so people wouldn't get demonetized. And I think that's actually kind of good, because it makes the game more accessible to a wider audience. When I get some free time, I'd like to experience the dense creative world of Night City. I'm intrigued by the story, but wouldn't feel comfortable playing it without certain adjustments. Or take Nier Automata, a game that I put down literally the moment I climbed a ladder. I've recently found a few mods for this game, which actually makes her fit much more appropriate. So I'm really excited that I'm gonna be able to start playing it soon. I understand that some might argue that this is compromising the author's intent, but come on, really? You're gonna tell me that Abby's scene was necessary? I mean, are you really gonna tell me that stuff like this is integral to the plot? To clarify as well, I'm totally fine with my big sprawling RPGs having romance mechanics. Still here. Well, yes. Why wouldn't I be? Are you... interested in me? It's settled then. Brief as life can be in Skyrim. At least we'll have each other. Oh. Who would have thought talking to girls would be that easy? Wow. And look, I understand that no matter what I say, no matter how many caveats I put into this video, some people are gonna be pretty ticked off about what I'm saying here. I just want to remind you that I'm not talking about censorship, I'm just talking about accessibility. The reality is that not everybody wants sexual content or sexually objectifying content in their media. And if the product holds up so well on its own, then why not have a little switch that just toggle that bad boy and turn it off. One of the greatest games of all time understands this, Baldur's Gate 3. I'm currently playing through it with three friends. The game is phenomenal and more to the point, it has a toggle which enables me to enjoy it with a clear conscience. Larry and Studios once again cementing the fact that they are the literal goats of video games. Yeah, 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 Woo, yeah, 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 Larian, you're good. Um, but I do want to give a disclaimer real quick uh, that the implementation of these settings definitely isn't perfect. I'd sunk over 80 hours into this glorious game and I hadn't encountered any hoo-ha at all. But then literally out of the blue, last play session, the game shows us a scene that I clearly said I didn't want to see. And after doing some furious digging in the underdark, otherwise known as Reddit, I found that this is actually likely a glitch that I've experienced that's been in the game for some time, supposedly since patch 1.03. Either way, I thought it was worth mentioning alongside me giving Larian Studios a glowing endorsement. Gubby gubby. We've come a long way since the days of Sims getting randy. Beforehand, it was just a bunch of pixels, a mosaic of geometry. Now, thanks to modern graphics, sex appeal has a much more profound effect on our brains, at times releasing dopamine like a fire hydrant. I mean, compare Ivy from Soul Calibur 1 all the way to Soul Calibur 6. There is a video gamey element to her at the start, a quality that makes it easier for me to look past, but now it's harder for me to differentiate and can be distracting. In saying this, the other ongoing solution is don't play something that makes you uncomfortable. We can always hope that genuinely good games will have mods or tweaks that will enable more players to enjoy them, but realistically, it's not worth engaging with something if you will harbor guilt or shame on your conscience while playing it. And that's just it, right? It's a matter of conscience. And not every game is going to be accessible to every player. Not every game is for you, just like not every game is for me. That's cool. I genuinely believe that having more options available will always be a win for gamers. And in the same token, I just want to stress this one more time, not all games are like this. Not all games have this type of content, obviously. It's just not the case. Some games are, most games aren't. I don't want to be hyperbolic or make it seem like this whole sexualization of gaming is permeating every sphere of gaming and we're all doomed. Like, no, obviously not. Nearing the end of this video, I actually had to go searching for games that visually represent my point. 
because I'd exhausted the short list that I know of and had counted that have this issue. So I wasn't just showing you the same thing over and over again. Some people even note that due to streaming culture and publishers, games are actually becoming less sexualized. Interestingly, it seems like a lot of mainstream games from Eastern countries such as Japan or even South Korea are much more comfortable crafting games and worlds that have these sexualized characters in them. I really hope this hasn't come across as pretentious. I know most of our local gyms have got more skin showing than our games do. I just thought I'd share how I honestly feel. But honestly, I want to know your thoughts. Please, no gatekeeping or bad on each other, let's talk constructively. Is sexualization in games an issue for you? Or is it just a non-issue for you? Anyway, let me know. Let's catch up and chat down in the comments. I know that sounds really corny and people say it all the time, but I genuinely want to know your perspective on this. Uh, so I'll be reading every comment and trying to reply to as much as I can, okay? Anyway, thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day. See ya. Gubby gubby.